guys welcome back to my channel so I just want to do a quick video before my daughter gets home from school I've been asked to start giving tips and stuff on the market and how things are going so let me start off by saying it's been a journey it's been a journey <laughs> But, you know, recently I have three clients right now, all renters. So I'm doing a lot of rental stuff. I'm learning a lot of rental stuff. I'm having to read through um, the Ontario Landlord Tenant Board, um, the rules and regulations, because having to uh, make sure I know my stuff before dealing with some complicated scenarios. In general, some tips that I want to give you guys about renters right now. So, you know what, funny enough, like with the whole pandemic and everything, really right now, like in residential sales, it's mostly a um, seller's market. So there's not a lot of inventory out, but there are a lot of buyers. So with the seller's market, usually properties are going more quickly and the properties are going over asking. Traditionally, it's been pretty much a balanced market, but especially since the pandemic, not the, the whole spring market has just been pushed back. So we're in the fall now and it's a spring market now. Yeah. So right now it's a seller's market. So there's a lot of buyers and not a lot of inventory. So the sellers have an advantage because if they get an offer and they don't like it, they can, they can be more, um picky because if one buyer doesn't bring them an offer they like then they're most likely going to have someone else coming with meeting their conditions or more of their conditions etc but now going into condos that's a different story so especially in the last few weeks the condo market has been saturated so there are a lot of condos um for sale. So the condo market right now, well, particularly in like the Toronto GTA, I would say the condo market is more of a buyer's market. So <clears throat> that's a quick market update. Regarding tips, okay. So particularly when you're working with renters, some things that you want to be more cautious of than working with um, people purchasing homes is I think just knowing, I don't know how to word this. You just, you want to know your, your client. So first of all, you want to make sure they are clients. So you don't want to be running around booking appointments, spending gas, um, <clears throat> doing research, running credit reports, doing all this stuff without securing your BRA, which is your buyer's rep agreement. So you want to make sure you get that secured. So I find a lot of people are nervous about this agreement and I was too at first, but I think it's just all in the way that you explain it to people. Because if you say, okay, before we go on another client, I have to make sure you're signed to a contract with me for six months, they may be a bit wary about it. But explain to them that, um, you know what, you want to be able to make sure you give them give them your best attention and provide the best services to them. So. In order to do that, you only take on a certain amount of clients or you but you just explain to them that this is paperwork that is standard with working with any realtor and just um, in order to continue this relationship in a successful manner or in a productive manner, you just want to make sure that we're all on the same page and everything is understood, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Something. You customize your own approach. But um, so yes, you want to make sure you have a contract in place. Um, me personally, I'll go on one one tour and see a few homes with someone, make sure we jive, they like me, I like them, and then um, require the contract to be signed after that. If they're not ready for that, then that's no problem. Um, that's just the way that I want to do my business. Some people may go longer. It's up to you. However you want to run your business, whatever time you have to dedicate to that, that is up to you. So um, one, get the contract, make sure you have a contract sign, or at least make sure you talk about it so that they know that this is something you wanna to work towards. Number two, credit. Okay, with every rental property, like the main documents they want is a credit check from Equifax, 
employment letter, recent pay stubs, referral, like a personal reference, and then a referral from a previous landlord. You wanna make sure you have that ahead of time. So um, from like the first day I talked to people, I just let them know those five things, saying this is typically what's asked. Are you okay with getting those things? So that's out the gate, they know about it. The employment, like all those stuff they get themselves. The only thing I really help with is the credit check. So if they can get one on them, if they can get one, they have Borwell or Credit Karma or something and they can get an updated report, I would say having one less than 30 days. They can get one for free um, for Borwell or Credit Karma or maybe some other places too. If you want to request one as a realtor, you can find a company that does that services. I like using Single Key. I've used them a few times and they've been great and I haven't had any issues with them. So that's an option. And then the rest of this document stuff is stuff they should be able to get themselves. So yes, tips with renters. With the credit score in general, from what I hear, 650 and above is something that's doable. So as long as they have an okay credit score and with the credit too, you gotta look at the credit, you actually have to read the credit report and know what you're looking at because some things that they look out for is, it's. It's okay if they're late on some credit card bills or some phone bills and stuff like that, but the things that are really important, they wanna make sure that there isn't any past due of rent um, from their current or previous places and also no past due on utilities. So those are the main things that stick out to them that they look for. Everything else is pretty much workable. Yeah, I think that's it. So make sure you talk about the agreement so they know what's coming and what your expectations are. Um, get the credit score, those references, the employment um, to secure it, and then beyond that, um, just know why they're moving, um, whether it be for a growing family or coming out of the area or for work or the lease is ending or whatever it may be because the realtor listing the home will, will, will ask. Oh, speaking of which, commission. So what I found is that commission is a lot lower with rentals, obviously. So commission, for some reason, I thought it was a full month's rent, but apparently it is half, typically, it's half a month's rent plus HST. That's what most people do. I actually showed a home where the rent in Hamilton was 1400 for two bedroom, one bathroom. What was it? It was a basement apartment, I believe. Two bedroom, one bathroom. The rent was fourteen hundred a month, and the commission they were giving to realtors was five hundred dollars, including HST. So something like that. Normally it would be seven hundred dollars plus HST, but they did five hundred, including HST. So you just gotta pay attention to those. Make sure you know ahead of time. And in the end of the day, if it suits your client's needs, that's what you need to make sure you're providing. But um, just for budgeting purposes for you and your business, you want to make sure you're paying attention to that. And yeah, I think that's about it for today. See ya.